Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is Friday the 13th. And also we are going to be on the lookout for the harvest moon that is tonight. Uh, so if you guys have clear skies, make sure you check out this big, bright, beautiful uh, moon that we're going to have tonight. Bear with me, folks. <laughs> All right, so let's get into it because we got some space weather to go over and we have some uh, weather to go over as well. Our solar wind speeds are sitting at 500.8 kilometers per second with a density of 4.4. Right now our sun is blank once again as you guys can see here in the center of your screen. That is a current look at our star. We have zero sunspots. Again, this is now 10 straight days without sunspots and 179 days for 2019 so far. Our KP indices are sitting at a one and our 24 hour max is also, oh, sorry, is at a three. TCI hasn't changed, it's, been, it's stayed 4.02 for the last several days. So we are continuing to monitor that. I keep getting a request from a commenter named Simon and uh, Simon's new to the channel and he would like to know records and stuff like that. <clears throat> and Mari and I talked about this last night so I think uh, here we are going to uh, do a couple things to help people understand the sunspots and the spotless days and all that good stuff. But let's zoom in a little bit closer here if we see any coronal holes. And right now there's one in the southern region that we might get some minor solar wind from. Uh, we're expecting that on September 17th and I'm sorry, 16th and the 17th. But other than that, uh, it's pretty quiet right now. No, no uh, CMEs, no sunspots, no coronal holes, nothing like that whatsoever just a quiet sun all right so let me go over to spaceweather.com this is for simon by the way uh whoops that wasn't for simon yeah i love live guys you gotta love it how's everybody doing this friday morning all right good stuff so let's take a look at our totals here um and simon has been watching i've noticed his comments the last couple days and and it's fair enough to ask he's been asking What's the record? Uh, what, what is it to past years? And for those of you who are new to the Grand Solar Minimum channel, uh, here's a look at the last, well, 13 years. Uh, 2009, 2010, or 2008, 2009 was the last minimum period that we had, which was, by the way, the weakest minimum that we had seen in 150 years. Scientists are saying now that the minimum that we're entering now is going to be the weakest in the last 200 years. So, Go ahead and uh, do the math there, folks. That means we're in a grand solar minimum. But here's what sunspots looked like last year, 2018, 221 days of sunspots. <clears throat> if you compare that to where we were at this point in the minimum last time, in 2018, you would compare it to the 2007 year. So that was the year before we got to the peak of that current minimum, 2008, 2009. So look at the difference in sunspots. I'll go ahead and scroll it up a little bit. <clears throat> 2007 had 152 days. Fast forward 11 years, and it's 221 days without spots. So we can already see the difference between the two minimums, that this one is already starting off a lot less active than what we had seen in previous minimums. So 2007 had 152 days without sunspots. 2018 was over 221 days. <clears throat> now, 2008 was 268, 2009 was 260 days. So if we had to go off of looking at previous data, we would have to say that 2019 and 2020 will be the lowest amount of sunspots that we will observe from the sun. And it could be even further than that than just 2020, 2021 and 2022 also could be in there as well. Different kind of beast here when we're talking about grand solar minimums, folks. So I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Simon. I wanted to show you this chart real quick. And you can find this on spaceweather.com, and I hope this helps you in the future. All right, let's take a look at some weather for today, guys. We got some showers and thunderstorms once again in Michigan. You guys are just getting pummeled lately. And watch out, Detroit. Uh, better chance of severe weather as this big line of storms is moving through this, the mitten state as we speak. Texas and Oklahoma experiencing some thunderstorms and showers as well. And Florida, eh, just some spotty scattered showers along also in North Carolina and South Carolina. The majority of us are going to stay dry. 
So that's the good news for this Friday 13th full moon, you name it. Uh, if you're superstitious, just stay home and uh, you know watch a bunch of Grand Solar Minimum channel videos all day. That way you don't get in trouble. Okay, so let's take a look at some images here. We have a tropical storm watch out, or actually it's, I think it's a warning. Let's go back and check that out real quick. I have that tab, I do, I really do. All right, so we are looking at several storms actually. The one in the orange uh, behind it, th that one is the one that's gonna kind of concern me a little bit. This is the one that is, um, everyone's kind of watching right now on the models on GFS. And actually I will, I will pull that as well. But this one right here, this is the one that we're watching and we've seen it in the GFS come up in here and go up the East Coast, all right? This one right here, unfortunately, do you guys see where this is, right? Right near the Bahamas. And unfortunately, that track is going to be pretty identical to the one that they just had. The only difference is that we're not talking about a Cat 5. This is not going to be a hurricane even. This is a depression right now, maybe turning into a tropical storm at worst. So, tropical force winds, yeah, you're talking about 30, 40 miles an hour. Uh, but this could be a rainmaker as well. If you guys take a look at the Ghost satellite, and tons of activity, but still very, very, very unorganized. And right now it is just in the beginning stages. Here are the Bahamas, folks. This is the areas where we saw total destruction in March Harbor. And here we are, Freeport and Aboko. So this track of this storm is gonna come up through the Bahamas once again. So the unfortunate part is the cleanup hasn't even really begun in that part of the world, all right? They're getting ready to get dumped on maybe another five to 10 inches of rain with this storm, possibly more. It just depends on the development of this. We have to stay tuned and watch it. But the current track is that of Hurricane Dorian. Uh, and this storm is actually gonna make a little bit closer appearance to the coast of Florida. As you guys can see, the same exact areas that we were just covering Labor Day weekend. So uh, we might have a little bit of uh, stuff to talk about this weekend here on the Grand Solar Minimum Channel. We'll keep our eyes on it. Nothing major at this point. But what we are going to be watching uh, is this storm behind it. And that is the one that's got everyone's attention right now as we speak. Um, I'm not going to sit here and make any speculations just yet about this storm. But I will show you guys um, at least a model today's updated version of what we're looking at with this particular storm that i'm talking about that's still way off into uh, the atlantic ocean right now so still some time before that happens but uh, they are looking at the possibility of this thing being kind of a nasty nasty storm um, so let me get this gfs turned up for you here real quick and some good and bad well here's the good news the storm, according to the GFS, looks like it might be trying to um, possibly, let me get this fixed for you guys. Hang on, just give me one second here. All right, I'm not really concerned. Sorry, sorry, Canadians. I'm not really uh, doing a full weather update. I just kind of want to show everybody what's happening. There is our invest storm down here near Florida, and it's a lot of rain. I mean, this is definitely going to be a rainmaker. This is September 14th tomorrow. And as we move forward, that, that little system will make its minor contact. Now, GFS is indicating that Jacksonville, Florida is gonna get the bullseye right now of the heaviest rain when this storm does finally hit the East Coast. But again, we're not talking about hurricane, we're not talking about anything that is life-threatening at this time. This is just a tropical depression at the time. It hasn't even developed into a storm. It's very unorganized. So Monday, September 16th, this thing is racing up the coast. And right before it gets to North Carolina, it races back out to sea. That's the good news. It's a short-lived storm. Not much is going to come from it. Uh, looking at the future, though, here we are September 22nd, and our next storm is approaching us. Now, that is the one. It's in the very bottom of your corner. Let me try to see if I can get this arrow for you. Here. It's right here. Watch it right here at your bottom of your screen, folks. Now, the track on this thing has changed so much. And thankfully, according to this model, we are seeing 
this storm not tracking anywhere a near the Bahamas and B it is not making any kind of apparent landfall but the motion of this storm is interesting because of how far north it does go and we all know that these tracks can change this is Friday September 27th by the way so we all know that these hurricane tracks can change especially this far we're talking 13 days away so this first GFS model at the 6 actually has us uh, not worrying about any kind of hurricane action, but look at this. Thor, some snow in your home state, my friend. Holy moly. All right, let's take a look at a different view of this here. Let's go to the zero. Not all models have come out yet. We're still waiting for the 18Z forecast, uh, which is the one that we all usually watch. If anything, I'll just run last night's. Wait, we were live last night, weren't we? So never mind. No, we weren't. It's Thursday. Tonight we're live. Guys, I can't keep track of the days. September 20th, uh, GFS doesn't even show that tropical depression, really. Now, it's interesting on the 00Z here, it has this storm once again making an approach from the southern part of the Gulf, or near it, I should say. And this storm will continue to move up the coast. Uh, almost a lot like Dorian. That's the unfortunate part. Now looking at the pressures here, now, geez, if this track is true, this storm is going to hit the other side of the Bahamas that didn't get blasted. Now the good news is the pressure is 976. We're probably talking about a Category 1 hurricane at this time, nothing too severe. But watching this forecast, the 26th, the East Coast is spared for the most part until about September 27th. And on the other models, just to let you guys know, on the 6 model, it shows the storm going off to sea and not even affecting land. But this model has us making landfall around North Carolina, still around 976 millibars. And then it gets real messy here in the Northeast by next weekend, actually, or two weeks from now. As you can see, lots of rain, Philly, New Jersey, uh, New York City, uh, parts of upstate New York, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New Hampshire, and then Maine gets the brunt of this. Yeah, Maine will get hurricane-like rain, possibly some tropical storm force winds, but nothing too major as this thing will lose its speed and head off to sea by the 28th. Um, and let's see if I can get the other model. Nope, it's not ready yet. So hopefully, I'll show you guys what, we're, what we were looking at last night on the 18Z here at GFS. Uh, let's take a look as the storm approaches and you know the 18z even has the storm not even approaching our United States so uh, Some good news today as far as I'm concerned, but we are two weeks away From this potential storm that could have some kind of an impact on the United States uh, Right now just a typical fall like pattern starting to develop here across the United States Temperatures have been up and down. I can tell you one thing here in upstate New York. We were sitting at 85 on Wednesday and by the time we got to uh, Well yesterday, it was only 63 degrees for a high so already starting to see some funky temperature swings I'm sure there'll be more of that to come as well in the future. All right, that's gonna do it for us this morning guys We're gonna go ahead and sign off for now. We will be back live tonight actually 12 hours from now to be exact We will be live with the Grand Solar Minimum News Update until then, we will talk soon. Take care, guys.